Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It really helps me out if you like, comment, subscribe, and if you would consider purchasing from one of my sponsors in the description. Thanks a bunch. Hey everyone, in a previous short line history, I told you how the Le Capital train was the predecessor to the TGV. A lot of the lessons that the French learn from Le Capital, including how to build high-speed locomotives and carriages, became indispensable in their efforts to build a high-speed rail that eventually crisscrossed all of France. Not only that, I think the Le Capital is an absolutely beautiful train. But of course, France is not the only country to have taken this route, and the country that I am concerned with today is China. In fact, today, China boasts having more high-speed rail trackage than any other nation on Earth. They had their own versions of Le Capital. They had, just like Le Capital, an electric locomotive, that is the SS-8, and I will discuss that in a separate video. After working out the bugs of the SS-8, they began to mass produce it, but they didn't have enough electrified track to really utilize it. Therefore, in order to have quasi-high-speed rail across the country, they had a different solution. And that solution was the quasi-high-speed diesel electric locomotive, the DF-11, or Dongfeng-11. Using a more reliable engine than its predecessor, the DF-4 series, along with lighter weight construction technologies, the DF-11 would pull semi-high-speed trains everywhere that electrified lines weren't available. The design's a good one, and they're still used in China today. So come join me on this journey where I check out the DF-11 and I show you my model of the DF-11. So hang on a second and we'll get right there. Just like the French, the Chinese targeted one specific section of track in order to test their new quasi-high-speed rail concepts. That track is the track between the city of Guangzhou and Shenzhen. The reason why this corridor is so important and was a target for high-speed rail from the beginning is because Guangzhou and Shenzhen are the base points for the trunk line leading to Hong Kong. If you wanted to go to Hong Kong from the mainland, Guangzhou acted as the collection point and Shenzhen acted as the entry and exit point into Hong Kong. Future projections showed that this line would grow greatly in the future, and the transit time of up to three and a half, sometimes even more hours, was definitively suboptimal. Starting 1989, formal studies were undertaken to determine whether the maximum speed on this section of track could be raised to 160 kilometers per hour. All aspects of quasi-high-speed rail were studied, including cab signaling systems, external signaling systems, improved track, and of course, two new locomotives that would be able to drive up to 160 kilometers per hour over this extended stretch. The Qishuan Locomotive and Rolling Stock Factory developed the locomotive based on its passenger predecessor, the DF-4, and the newer freight replacement for the DF-4, the DF-8. The Locomotive Works developed a new lightweight load-bearing body, lightweight bogies and axles, and a computerized control system that was fully in Chinese. The locomotive that they presented to the Ministry of Railways in October of 1990 was dubbed the DF-9. Eventually, a second prototype joined the first, and they were both used as test beds to ensure that a production version would be able to meet the Ministry of Railways requirements. Eventually, some mechanical improvements were made, improvements to the body, which would afford greater aerodynamics, along with the controlling computer, which would now be a 16-bit microprocessor. Another improvement would come in the form of brand new traction motors that had not been used on any other locomotive in China up to this point. In March of 1992, the final design was set and construction began on what would be the first two prototypes of the DF-11. Finally, on December 7th, 1992, the first DF-11 serial number 0001 was presented for testing. While the DF-9 was limited to 140 kilometers per hour due to its older traction motor and gearing, the new DF-11 would be able to reach its top speed of 160 kilometers per hour plus thanks to the new traction motors and a new gearing ratio that it would support. In April of 1994, the second prototype 0002 
broke a national speed record when it achieved 183 kilometers per hour or 114 miles per hour. In December of 1994, several DF-11s and their accompanying quasi-high-speed trainsets were delivered to work on the Guangzhou to Shenzhen quasi-high-speed railway. When running at their designed speed, they are able to shave time off the trip from 2 hours and 5 minutes to 1 hour and 12 minutes. Of course, there were some teething problems for this new locomotive and for the quasi-high-speed train set, but they were eventually worked out as time progressed. The locomotives and their quasi-high-speed train sets began to prove their worth, however, and slowly but surely, the numbers of quasi-high-speed runs were increased. Eventually, the number of train set runs increased to the point where they were running more than four per hour. In 1996, the DF-11 had proven its worth, and it was approved for mass production and mass use throughout the railroads of China. Eventually, 460 of the units were made, and production continued until 2005. It's a good thing, too, because even though a lot of lines were supposed to transfer over to electric powers, problems with cantonary and with pantographs meant that the DF-11 had to fill in quite often. DF-11 is still used over non-electrified runs to this day, so if you decide that you want to ride behind one of these, you have the opportunity. The closest US locomotive I can think of to the DF-11 in specification is the General Electric Genesis series, with a couple major caveats. The DF-11 is a six-axle locomotive with a top nominal operating speed of 160 kilometers per hour. It weighs 138 metric tons, which is 152 US tons. Its prime mover is a 16V280 ZJA 16-cylinder four-stroke engine, which produces a nominal horsepower of 4,840, which translates to just over 4,000 horsepower at the dynamometer. At this weight, the tractive effort is 245 kilonewtons maximum and 160 kilonewtons continuous. One of the curious limits of this locomotive, however, is that it does not produce head-end power. That means the carriages will have to use on-carriage generators or they'll have to be a power car in tow. Power cars are actually quite common in China, and so don't be surprised if you see one of these go by, it will have a power car attached to it. As an aside, the nickname for this locomotive is Tiger, which is pretty cool. It seems like it makes sense to me. If you're interested in modeling passenger locomotives from China, then I think the DF-11 is a must on your list. It is so influential, particularly when it comes to modern passenger service, that you pretty much have to have one in your stockade. Now that I think about it, there's one more place you can ride behind a DF-11, and that's Kenya. Five DF-11s have been exported there to run their new passenger lines. I have to admit, if they make a model of this train, there would be very little you could do to stop me from getting one, even if I had to go to Kenya to get one. Even if I had to go to Kenya in my underwear, I would get one. New me and fresh like always. The staff are polite. I've used my DF-11 is made by Bachmann China, and I actually have one from the first tranche that came out. They made these in several different tranches, all with, uh, they're pretty much the same, but slight differences. But you can tell from my box that this is from the first run. And we'll get this open here, and you can see this is pretty typical for what Bachmann includes with their models from this era. It's uh, both in Chinese and in English, tells you a little bit about what's going on here with the model and it should have a parts diagram and that acts as a mini instruction sheet and a certificate since this is a limited edition. I actually know the person who sold this to me and for what it's worth, a lot of Chinese locomotives, and I mean a lot, probably the majority of them are actually still new. This is still new even though it was made in the mid 2000s, early to mid 2000s, but it's not been run, at, particularly at the time, there were so few affordable available locomotives to Chinese that most of them just collected them and never ran them. They never had layouts anyway, and a lot of them didn't have the space to run layouts. So don't be shocked if you see one of these listed or any Chinese locomotive listed that may have been made several years ago, but is in fact still brand new. 
Even though this is a model from the early to mid 2000s, as you can see, it would probably count as a near premium model today. There aren't separately added pieces, these grills and everything are molded in, but it does have cab figures, has hoses attached, coupler cut bar and matching grab irons. I went ahead and installed the Chinese made decoder that's specifically made for the DF-11. I don't know if it, they really went out and recorded the DF-11 or not, but I wanted to see what this decoder was like. It comes with the speaker that you see there, and because of that, it fell into place pretty nicely here. The coaches that are going to pull are the Bachmann China SYZ25 Quasi High Speed Coaches. These were developed around the same time for the same purpose. They are double deck. And what's interesting about these coaches is Bachmann China actually took all of their Chinese coaches, basically wiped away all the Chinese lettering, all the markings, and sold them to the West. And a lot of people use these coaches because they were relatively cheap and they were easy to get. So uh, yeah, don't be surprised to see these around somewhere when in fact they don't have any Chinese markings on them. And maybe you've wondered what they are well this is what they are as you can see it has markings even on the air conditioners up there it's nice uh, markings on the sides and again these are from Bachmann China so I would say overall they were superior to anything that was coming out in the day in terms of their detail and lettering now they've been surpassed but they're certainly very nice coaches um, they ride smooth the only thing and they have NEM coupler pockets which I think is actually really interesting I actually generally switch out the couplers with European style couplers because these are so long if your track isn't perfect they have a tendency to tilt around and come uncoupled on uneven sections you can see that they include disc brakes and remember this was the mid actually about the early to mid 2000 that they included disc brakes so they were definitely ahead of their time if you're wondering what came before the DF-11, don't worry, I've got those videos coming up. It's taken me a little bit longer to make these than I thought. I'm trying to do my best on them and keep them short. I'd love to do mainline histories for all of these, but it's just not feasible. I know probably learning about Chinese locomotives is not at the top of everyone's list, but I don't make them to be popular. I make them to hopefully expand on some things that people haven't thought about, and I hope I've done that here today. Again, if you want to get a DF-11, it's fairly easy to find the Bachmann ones around. And even if it's one that was made pretty far in the past, don't worry. If the person selling them says they're um, new, then they probably are, just because of the way model collection works in China. I'd assume going forward that a lot of companies will take on modeling the DF-11 just because of its historical significance and because of, well, just the fact that these could be seen anywhere and ridden anywhere, particularly before true high-speed electrified rail was put in. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll let this running session run out. And uh, yeah, thanks a bunch for watching. I really appreciate it. If this meant anything to you, if you learned anything, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe and hit that bell for me. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, particularly if you, well, <laughs> if you any thoughts, uh, particularly if you've ridden on this, I'd love to know about it. All right, till next time, take care, stay safe. I will talk to you later. Have the happiest model railroading times ever. Bye for now.